are some views of a typical engine you'll see in a general aviation aircraft. At the engine bottom is the carburetor. Looking inside the carburetor, notice the unusual carburetor components. The air intake, the fuel supply entering the carburetor, and the throttle valve. From this point, the air-fuel mixture travels to the engine. If your aircraft has fuel injection, there will be no carburetor in the engine, and the fuel will be directly injected into each engine cylinder. On fuel-injected engines, fuel is injected directly into the cylinders rather than being vaporized in a carburetor. Since the cylinder is hot, there is not much danger of icing when the fuel combines with intake air and vaporizes. Both fuel injection and carburetor systems have their own considerations for icing conditions. Let's cover the carbureted engine first. A float type carburetor is commonly found in many general aviation aircraft and you see one right here. It operates by a differential air pressure present at the carburetor throat. This throat is also called the venturi. However, carburetors are not without problems. As the air flows through the venturi, the fuel vaporization can cause the temperature to drop by as much as 60 degrees Fahrenheit. This may cause a condition known as carburetor icing. You can see the buildup of ice right here in the throat of the carburetor. A carburetor ice is most likely to form when the outside temperature is between 20 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit with high humidity or visible moisture. The first sign of carburetor icing in a fixed pitch propeller airplane is a loss of engine RPM. If you suspect carburetor icing, apply carburetor heat immediately. Carburetor heat is an anti-icing system that preheats the air entering the carburetor. When applying carburetor heat, two things happen. First, carburetor heat enriches the fuel-air mixture because the warm air entering the engine is less dense, but the amount of fuel is unchanged. This causes an excess of the required fuel-air ratio because of the decreased air density. Secondly, the richer mixture causes a decrease in RPM or manifold pressure. Generally, using carburetor heat decreases engine performance. Now, if there's ice in the carburetor and heat is applied, it will melt and be ingested into the engine. This causes the engine to run even rougher and reduce engine RPM even more. But don't worry, things are going to get better in just a matter of seconds. As that ice melts, RPM and manifold pressure will gradually increase. Fuel injected and carbureted engines are susceptible to another type of icing called induction icing. Now induction icing is a condition where induction air usually taken in near the air filter is blocked by ice. The remedy is to use alternate induction air. Ice usually forms in the induction area when flying in visible moisture or in freezing temperatures. Okay, welcome back. Let's take this question on carburetor icing. The presence of carburetor ice in an aircraft equipped with a fixed pitch propeller can be verified by applying carburetor heat and noting A, B, or C. Please take time to have a look. Okay, you have your answer? I'll pose the question again. The presence of carburetor ice in an aircraft equipped with a fixed pitch propeller can be verified by applying carburetor heat and noting C, a decrease in RPM and then a gradual increase in RPM. Once again, if ice is present, there will be a decrease in RPM and then a gradual increase in RPM.